Hi guys, welcome to this conference. My name is Ramachandran. I'm at UCSD, University of California, San Diego, and I direct the Center for Brain and Cognition there. My research is two areas of research. One area is to study visual perception, hum human vision, which I spent 20 years of my life doing. The last 20 years I've been studying neurology, looking at patients who have sustained injury to a small region of the brain. Often what you see when there's a small injury is not an across the board blunting of the mental capacities. What you see is a highly selective loss of one specific function. You can correlate that function with that structure. So the name of the game is structure function correlation. It goes all the way back to Paul Broca and, and uh, uh, Charcot and, and Freud and all those guys who were doing, in fact, Freud was doing anatomy. And, and, and people don't realize this before he became a psychologist. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you mainly about plasticity today, given the scope of the conference. There's a conference on plasticity after all. And describe to you some, give you some examples of the kinds of cases we've been ta trying to tackle. It takes you right into the heart of the problem of nature versus nurture. To what extent are the intricate connections in the brain specified by genes? To what extent are they acquired by interaction with the environment and indeed interaction with other people through what are called mirror neurons? And let me give you a couple of surprising examples of this. We recently observed a patient who had a phantom, vivid phantom limb, which you all know about, pain in the phantom limb. And I, simply out of curiosity, I started tapping my own thumb, 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 and asked him what, what he felt. He looked at me strange and he said, oh, I feel that tapping on my thumb, doctor. I said, how about that? I feel that stroking on my my elbow. The patient says he feels my stroking my, my elbow on his elbow. How is that possible? One of the questions we'll try to answer. His clinical relevance is when he feels pain, he asks his wife to massage herself and he, he gets a phantom massage that eliminates the phantom pain. Now, all of this is widely publicized. I'm going to talk about phantom limbs only for a short while, and then move on to other disorders like apotomnophilia, xenomelia, where the patient actually desires the amputation of the arm. How do you help a patient with this, with this problem? Indeed, they don't regard it as a problem. So it's a double challenge for, for, for the physician. But I very much look forward to the, to the event, to this meeting. I'm glad you're all here. We'll have a great brain party, so to speak. And um, I, I thank the organizers, for, especially for inviting me to be here. Thank you very much.